Now let me, let me now move to a, a little discussion about tourism and about our, our tourism budget, which you, as you can imagine is something uh, weighing very heavily on my mind as the legislature is deciding how much to invest in tourism spending. Uh, our Pick Your Passion brand, which we introduced a, a little bit over a year ago, has given us great reason for optimism um, in, in the tourism world right now. Louisiana has been the focus of a great deal of national attention over the course of the past 12 months, and that is going to continue throughout this year. Political attention is focused on Louisiana because of the changes that are underway in the legislature, because of the speculation about Governor Jindal's role on the national stage within the Republican Party, and that has focused attention on the state of Louisiana. We have literally burst onto the scene in the area of motion picture tax credits, as all of you know. Louisiana is now the number three movie making destination in America, behind California and New York. Uh, we have gained prominence in the world of reality TV uh, because of the, the popularity of shows like Swamp People. And as, as you recall, earlier this year, I went to New York on two occasions with the cast of Swamp People to launch season three with the History Channel. For relatively little investment by the state of Louisiana, partnering, partnering with the History Channel, we gathered 11,000 email addresses of people who paraded through Chelsea Market in Manhattan to meet the swamp people and to see the swamp that had been built in that market by the History Channel. People were fascinated with the adventure opportunities and the authenticity that Louisiana had to offer. And that's why we were anxious to be a part of that event. And we've captured these 11,000 names of people who are interested in Louisiana outdoor activities. We now need to make certain we have the resources to go directly market to people who came to see a Louisiana swamp and expressed an interest in traveling to Louisiana. Uh, the eyes of the sporting world have certainly been on Louisiana over the course of the past several months, uh, beginning with the BCS championship game, which we like to forget, of course, at least the outcome, all the way through the men's final four, which was a tremendous event recently in New Orleans. Uh, the Bassmaster Classic, which was in New Orleans last year and was in Shreveport this year. The United States Bowling Congress, which is filling Baton Rouge hotel rooms uh, for the first six months of this year. And next year, we have the Women's Final Four and the Super Bowl to look forward to. We have a, a great opportunity for Louisiana to be the focal point of all things happening in the sports world. Uh, the Zurich Classic coming up in just a couple of weeks, the Masters winner yesterday. Bubba Watson is a defending champion of the Zurich Classic is scheduled to come back so that's going to provide an added spotlight on this New Orleans golf event which we're hoping to see grow and grow and become even more prominent on the PGA Tour. And obviously as you know interest in the television show American Idol which is one of the most watched shows on television now features a Louisianian Josh Ledette from West Lake who is making his way through the process and uh, at literally nominal expense, the cost of shipping crawfish and boudin and jambalaya um, and zwali tamales to Los Angeles to feed the dream of Josh Ledette, Louisiana continues to be the focus of interest at the national level. Um, and, and hopefully Josh is gonna continue to be successful and as he, as he continues to progress, I can assure you, he's gonna be talking about Louisiana food and Louisiana culture. His mother called me last week. She works at a recreation department in Westlake and she called me to say thanks for what the Louisiana Seafood Promotion Board, our Office of Tourism had done to collaborate to send those crawfish to Josh. And he's, he's, I asked her, what's his favorite Louisiana food? And she said, anything and everything from Louisiana he loves. So we're gonna continue to, to feed that young man's dream. Um, you know, New Orleans has been named by Food and Wine Magazine the number one destination in America. Travel and Leisure recognized New Orleans for a number of different categories for travel. Uh, as the primary destination of, of their readers. Um, Lafayette has been named the tastiest town in the South by Southern Living Magazine and the best food uh, for, in small town America. And according to USA Today poll, uh, Natchitoches is one of the best cities in America to retire. Um, Louisiana is literally gaining national attention for its attractiveness to people who are looking for a place to visit. 
in our market research based upon our Pick Your Passion brand, we've, we've branched out into some new marketplaces, Memphis and Atlanta, which are beyond our basic footprint for tourism, not traditional drive markets. But in those two areas uh, where we have introduced our Pick Your Passion commercials over the course of the past year, we had a 77% recognition in Memphis and about a 65% recognition in Atlanta. 65% was the highest recognition level we'd ever had for any campaign within the drive market of Louisiana. So this is very encouraging news as we're trying to track how we're doing on getting our brand out. Now, um, just to recap, to set the stage for, for my comments about what we need to do by way of tourism spending, no state general funds at all are appropriated for tourism. Our entire tourism budget is three one hundredths of a penny of sales tax that goes to a taxing district that then transfers that money to the Office of Tourism. No state general fund dollars support tourism. Tourism is clearly an industry in our state. For every dollar we invest in tourism, we're going to return $17 to the people of Louisiana. That is an incredible return on investment by anyone's standards. Tourism is not a burden on Louisiana taxpayers. It is a generator of income for the state of Louisiana. It is an industry, and we need to recognize it as an industry, as a business, and is very much a positive for the people of our state. It's a $9.5 billion business producing an average of $3.4 million for each of our 64 parishes. This is about jobs in local communities. It's about creating a revenue stream for local communities and most importantly, employing people within those communities. One out of every 10 Louisianians is employed in the tourism industry. Uh, that speaks volumes for the people who are dependent upon this industry for their livelihood. We grew jobs in Louisiana by almost 10,000 over the course of the past year and a half at a time when we're not investing the kind of dollars that we really need to be investing to make certain that we continue to compete with, with neighboring states. Now, as a result of this, Louisiana Tourism Coalition has formed with the Louisiana Travel Promotion Association taking the lead in coordinating a number of different groups who recognize the value and the importance of tourism as an industry. Um, their motto, their brand is Impact Louisiana. Investment means people are coming to Louisiana. Impact. If we spend money, people are going to come to Louisiana and make money for Louisianians. And that coalition is in the process now during this legislative session of trying to make certain that the administration and legislators understand the value of tourism to the Louisiana economy. Now, these numbers are hot off the press from New Orleans. Just to give you an example of how spending some money generates more money. New Orleans got $5 million in BP funding in 2010. In the wake of the spill, if you recall, there was $15 million made available to immediately address the problems that were sure to come from the BP oil spill. The state of Louisiana, this was before I was Lieutenant Governor, got $5 million. Um, the coalition of coastal parishes got $5 million, and the city of New Orleans got $5 million. With that $5 million in BP funding that New Orleans had, every nickel of that went into marketing the city. Visitation in New Orleans increased by more than 738,000 people, a 9.8% increase. Hotel occupancy was up by 13%. New Orleans, in the year of the spill, led the nation in rev par growth. That's revenue per available room. That is the the gold standard for those in the hospitality industry. Occupancy based upon available rooms and the amount that you're charging. New Orleans led the nation in growth, up almost 15%. And jobs in the hospitality sector in the New Orleans area alone rose by more than 2,000 in six months. In 2011, New Orleans Convention and Visitors Bureau partnering with the New Orleans uh, leisure marketing, leisure tourism group, headed by Mark Romig in the mayor's office, put $5.3 million in new money into tourism. This is above and beyond what they were otherwise intending to spend on marketing. In 2011, and you can see that it stretches into, th that 
that slide is wrong. It should be May 2012, October 2011 to May 2012. So that spending is going to continue for another month. And with the numbers in place right now, visitation has increased by 450,000, an additional 5.6% increase, spending increased by 28%, and jobs increased to the highest rate of employment since Hurricane Katrina. Spending money, investing in TV, radio, print, internet, and social media, the new avenues of communication for tourism and for advertising in general has yielded these kind of results for that calendar year. Projected overall, visitation increases a total of $1.2 million from 2010 to 2011. Sales tax revenue generated of more than $184 million, a ratio of $17.9 for every marketing dollar invested. And the sources are listed there. These are not made up statistics. These are uh, documented market research by UNO's annual survey, Smith Travel, and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So an investment in tourism is going to yield dividends for the people of Louisiana. Obviously, my mission is to expand this statewide and not only take advantage of New Orleans, which is the natural magnet for convention goers and for leisure travelers in Louisiana, but to expand that to all areas of the state, each of these areas having a tremendous amount of unique opportunities for people to enjoy if they come to Louisiana. Now, just to give you the background on where we are with tourism spending in Louisiana. I'll very briefly show you these three slides for the amount of money spent in the last three fiscal years. Fiscal year 1011, and the, the, the key portion of this chart that I want to highlight is the yellow, the pass-throughs. $5 million in pass-throughs through our tourism budget. Remember the three one-hundredths of a penny of sales tax. That's all we get. In 10 and 11, 5 million of that was spent on pass-throughs. That means money that simply passes through our budget. We don't get to spend it on advertising or marketing. It is earmarked for particular events, many of which are very productive for tourism in Louisiana, but this is for the operational aspects of those events. The Independence Bowl in Shreveport, the Essence Music Festival in New Orleans, uh, the New Orleans uh, Sports Foundation, operational expenses that come out of what should be advertising and marketing dollars. In 10-11, it was $5 million. 11-12, $5.6 million. Proposed for 12-13, $10.5 million. Now, the three one-hundredths of a penny, according to the Revenue Estimating Conference, is going to generate around 23 or 24 million dollars. Under the proposed budget being considered right now, 10 and a half million is going to be carved out. We won't have that to spend on running our Office of Tourism. The big growth is necessitated by the Women's Final Four next year, which has a one million dollar price tag, and the Super Bowl, which has a six million dollar price tag to the state of Louisiana. When we convinced the NFL years ago that this Super Bowl in 2013 should come to New Orleans, the NFL said, we'll be there, but you're going to have to give us $12 million to help us operate the Super Bowl. Not to advertise it, not to market it, but to pay for the operational expenses of having the bowl in New Orleans. That pays for hotel rooms for teams and all the bells and whistles that come with the Super Bowl. That was the price to pay to get the Super Bowl. It's a great investment. We project that the Super Bowl is going to yield about $450 million in an economic impact to the greater New Orleans area and to Louisiana. So it's a great investment. My contention has been all along, though, that the tourism budget designed to advertise and market Louisiana out of state should not be primarily responsible for paying the operational expenses of these various events or of any of these pass-throughs. $10.5 million in the proposed budget this year. I mean, that, you can see what that does to a budget of about 23 or $24 million. It's a 40-some-odd percent cut to what we would otherwise have to advertise and market Louisiana. Now, look at the next chart that shows you that we're trending in the wrong direction. This is what is spent on advertising and marketing going back to 06, 07. 07, 08 was the big post-Katrina year where a lot of money came in and there was a huge investment in marketing Louisiana. It has been a steady downhill climb since then. 
Since I've been in office, you can see we've increased ever so slightly in the 11-12 budget because I basically have said we are going to spend more money in advertising and marketing and make some reductions and some cuts elsewhere. This overall tourism budget includes welcome centers, it includes the salaries for people employed in the tourism industry, it includes familiarization tours, it includes advertising and marketing, it's everything that's wrapped up into tourism. And that bar ought to be increasing, not decreasing, when you realize the return on investment that tourism means to Louisiana. So one of my objectives, obviously, in this very difficult fiscal year is to convince the legislature that it needs to minimize some of those pass-throughs. Now, we're in a very difficult budget year, and I know that as well as anybody, and I'm, I'm not saying in this right now. I realize we're going to have to be responsible for paying uh, for some of these pass-throughs as we're going forward. I'm simply saying don't make us pay for the entirety, for example, of the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl has an economic development component, and either the general fund or some economic development funds ought to be tapped to help reduce the burden of those pass-throughs. I'm willing to say that the tourism budget will pay its share. I simply am saying I don't think we ought to be called upon to pay the entire state obligation to host the Super Bowl. I want to compete with Florida and Texas, not simply Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama. And I want to compete with Las Vegas and Chicago and New York and other major cities for conventions and for leisure travel, those who are making decisions on where to spend time. If we don't have the resources to adequately market the state and advertise the state in new areas, we're not going to be able to compete with these major states with whom we ought to be competitive. Arkansas alone is outspending us dramatically on direct advertising and marketing expenditures to sell Arkansas as a travel destination. It is a beautiful state, Arkansas is, but it does not have near what Louisiana has to offer to leisure travelers who are looking for adventure, for fun, for excitement, and for opportunities to, do, uh, to satisfy all the many passions that we're trying to share with the traveling public. I'll point to two quick examples. Colorado, in 1993, eliminated its tourism budget entirely. It had been spending $12 million on tourism and their visitation plunged by 30%. They finally came to their senses, reinstated funding for tourism, and they grew to an all-time high within about two years of restoring funding for tourism. The state of Florida this year, in the same difficult budget times that we are facing, has maintained a $35 million funding level for tourism. That is up 31% from the previous year. They're investing in tourism. They're not cutting tourism. Now, the comparison between Florida and Louisiana is obviously different. Florida has beaches. Florida has Disney World. Florida has some attractions that Louisiana does not have. But the point is they recognize the value of advertising and marketing to make sure that people know where they are and what they have to offer. And that's simply what I believe Louisiana needs to be doing as well. The Bicentennial Year provides an opportunity to have a little fun, too. So uh, I thought it would be appropriate to have a, a list of um, the 200 most notable people in Louisiana history. So I, I've developed that list. And uh, it is up on our website as of this morning. It is, as you'll see in the introduction, it is uh, one person stab at, uh, Bicentennial stab at uh, developing a list of our 200 most notable people. Um, the criteria was simple. You had to be someone who was, had made a name for yourself in Louisiana, but also the border, beyond the borders of Louisiana. Um, you had to either be born in Louisiana or have a very close connection to Louisiana. And um, in fact, I can tell you exactly what, uh, how the numbers shake out. Um, we have 15 people on here who predated statehood, uh, who shaped the fortune of Louisiana before statehood. I thought it was important to have those folks on represented. And um, there are 122 native-born Louisianians on the list, 63 non-native-born Louisianians, and 15 who predated statehood. Uh, and the list includes people from all of the various uh, passions that we have, from music and media and entertainment, politics, music, sports, 
uh, business and what have you. It's heavily weighted towards sports because of the partiality of the one-man selection committee. So um, <laughs> there are a lot of sports figures on the list, I have to confess. But uh, I hope it'll generate some discussion. It, I don't, it's not a, an exclusive list. It's, not, uh, it's certainly not perfect, but it's a stab at trying to say, you know what, we've had a great, colorful, rich history, and many people have brought, brought great fame and pride uh, and notoriety to the state of Louisiana. So as we celebrate the bicentennial, we need to look back over those 200 years and, and at least compile a list of those people who have made a contribution. There's also an extensive uh, kind of an honorable mention list because there are a lot more than 200 people. And to have a little fun, there's uh, five people who live in infamy and uh, five people who unfortunately died young in Louisiana. Uh, and you can venture a guess at some of those, who some of those may be. So anyway, you recognize some of those folks on there, no doubt. Um, but it, it's a fun list, and I hope everybody will enjoy it and use it as a way to help celebrate uh, the bicentennial of statehood. So with that, I'll stop and answer any questions that you may have. The anniversary of statehood is fast approaching on April 30th. There's going to be a series of great events in Baton Rouge on April 28th and 29th, free to the public. Uh, a family reunion in essence, a homecoming on the grounds of uh, the state capitol with food and music from literally all over the state, free of public to the, to the, free of charge to the public. I mean, there will be vendors selling food, but samples available. And then a bicentennial blues concert at the old state capitol the next day. And on April 30th is the bicentennial statehood. There'll be a joint session of the legislature to commemorate Louisiana joining the nation. And are all these free and open to the public? They are. Tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, tourism budget, where it stands now in the legislature. Well, the tourism budget is funded entirely with three one-hundredths of a penny of sales tax. There are no state general fund dollars at all. And of that three one-hundredths of a penny, it generates about $23, 24000000 million. Right now in the proposed budget, more than $12 million is taken out of that budget and used uh, for what we call pass-throughs because they simply pass through our budget and we're not able to use that money for its intended purpose to advertise and market Louisiana out of state. And I'm simply arguing that we ought to try and reduce those pass-throughs such that we can have a few million dollars more to advertise and market the state because we have established with, with market research, with very good independent data, for every dollar we spend on tourism, we bring $17 back to the people of Louisiana, which is an incredible return on investment. It means jobs for Louisianians, it means people visiting here, spending money, increasing tax revenues, and we're simply saying let us use that money for its intended purpose so we can better market and advertise the state. And you also mentioned a, a top 200 list. Tell us about that. Yeah, we did. I, I've developed a list of the 200 most notable people in Louisiana history in celebration of our bicentennial. And it uh, includes people who were born in Louisiana as well as people who made a name for themselves in Louisiana and 15 people who predated statehood but who had a profound impact on who we are as a people, like, for example, Iberville and Bienville, who made it all possible. And uh, where can people get access to this? At the Louisiana Bicentennial 2012.com on the Bicentennial website. We'll also have it posted on uh, my blog at louisianatravel.com.